So we got, but today we got together earlier to work on a thing. <laughs> and it's actually fucking cool. Cause you know, we sit here all the time and be like, you know, talk about cool shit, cool IP that exists and they're making shit from. And then periodically he makes that shit better by going, they should have done this. And you're like, fuck, that sounds good and shit. <laughs> and I always say like, God, why won't someone give you a TV show? And then I always go like, us as well. I hit my wagon to his star and we shit. We should get a show. Yeah, we, why don't we have a fucking show? We got a show. Well, to be fair, it's, it's you got a show and you were like, hey, you wanna come play? I, I was, well, I was like, I can't do a show without him. I mean, it, he, I listen to him improve shows all the time and I've never been a guy that's uh, uh, worked a writer's room and not because I'm against it, I was just always, Indy in in is alone, right? So I've always been the one guy writing by himself. One time on Clerks the Cartoon, we had a writer's room and that was so fucked up. It was weird to have people like, you pitch an idea and they're like, I don't know. And I'm like, I fucking invented Clerks. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, know, I know. Yeah, I fucking, trust me, this idea plays. Um, <laughs> So generally speaking, I didn't have that experience. So on this, I was like, oh my God, I get to play with a writer's room and I'm gonna learn how to do that. And I've listened to him talk about it so often and whatnot and sat here as he's like talked about the process. I was like, of course I'm gonna fucking yank him in. A a absolutely. So it's, it's a cool, it's a, it's a legit show. The only reason we could say we got a show is because like we fucking had an official meeting today. Like checks have been signed, big names and shit. It's fucking crazy. Wait. You got paid? <laughs> well, <laughs> somebody did. Oh, like, I thought this was like an internship. Like, I'm just photo. showing up for credit. Um, it is, uh, it's, we can't say what it is right now because they haven't released it yet. And they talked about today uh, the, when that's going to happen. And it's imminent. But Yeah, they'll announce it soon enough. Yes. And, and I mean, San Diego's coming. I wouldn't be surprised, like, if that True. was the time or whatever. Um, but... This, Ooh, it's a soap opera. This is, it's, it's uh, I'll, like, I, just to like put everyone at like ease or whatever the fuck, it's, it's not like Marvel. So don't be like, oh my God, they're gonna fuck up Marvel. Not at all, <laughs> not at all. We love it too much, I wouldn't go over there. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna fuck up your childhood, but not like your favorite thing in yes, your childhood. Yes, yes. <laughs> but it's true, good point. I mean, we are playing with very, uh, with time honored, one would say. Mm -hmm. Uh, IP, nostalgic IP for sure. IP that like, it, it's, it's fun, it's fantastic. And, and so we got into this thing where, you know, uh, today we sat around with the writers, uh, me and Mark Eric, who's uh, mm -hmm. Eric Carrasco, who's been on the show, uh, who worked on Supergirl and stuff. Um, and some other cats, I don't know if I'm at liberty, I probably shouldn't even said Eric, but whatever. <laughs> so. We sat around with our boss, and I can't tell you where the boss is from, but like, it's a good place. And then our other bosses, <laughs> who I can't say where they're from, but like, also a, good also a good fucking place, that if I said the word, you'd be like, oh, that's the sound of a happy childhood. And so, <laughs> so we all got together, about 10 of us, in the living yeah. room today, in this morning, from 9 a.m. to 1. To 1 o'clock, breaking story coming up with essentially what we were we were doing I, I should let me limit it it's not a movie it's a series i said we got a show yeah listen we can't talk that much about it because i told my current bosses that i had a doctor's appointment <laughs> like listen i gotta i gotta go i gotta like i gotta get a fucking like x-ray done or something like don't mind me i'll be back by one-ish <laughs> So yeah, like this blew up my fucking spot now. Sorry. I have to like invent another grandparent to die for the next time we get together. I, like didn't, high know. I didn't know that you were no, fucking it's all good. It's lying fine. to your employers and shit like that. <laughs> Doesn't really fucking make your new employer feel very good about things. <laughs> I'm like, oh, he's a liar, I see. It's, it's what I do for the passion. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> we do lie for a living, don't we? Um, it's a cool thing and we'll be able to talk about it uh, very soon. But to be fair, like it's it's very it's very big. It's much bigger than us, um, and in so many ways. In so many fucking ways, and uh, we're having this like grand old time with it, getting to do stuff with it that hasn't really been done before and stuff. Uh, it, it's it's a total 
fan service project, one could say. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been sweet. So anyway, we got to sit down in a room today. And like after all this time of sitting next to him and, and hearing what he does in a writer's room and stuff, I got to see him in the writer's room and he was fucking magic, man. Like it was really dope. Like there were, it was, yeah. There were no less than five moments where our employer, who is a fucking awesome dude, like I, like I, and I'm not just saying this because they gave us a job. I've worked for many people and not really said this. Like this guy is makes it fun to go to work. He is so fucking passionate. He's he's an exec, but he's might as well be one of the fucking writers. Yeah. Um, he came up with like fantastic ideas and shit. Mark five times, no less than five times over the course of the, those from nine till one. Uh, our boss was just like, ooh. That's awesome. You know, and everyone's like, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. It was dope, man. It was really cool. I felt a sense of, like, pride, even though, like, I didn't have the idea, but I was like, I know him. <laughs> he's here because I told him to come here today. He, his fresh ideas are kind of mine. <laughs> he brought his toys, and I'm putting my name on them. <laughs> kind of was that. Um, oh, my God. It was fun. So, after all this time of sitting around talking about, like, man, I wish... We got something. We're doing a thing. And I don't think, uh, we, it's, it's moving very fucking fast. Yeah. Um, way faster than I'm accustomed Ooh. to. Yes. Uh, which is, to be honest, like a little like, oh, okay. Like, it's just, I'm used to working at my own, it took me like fucking three years to get Jane Silent Bob reboot made. <laughs> These cats are like, we released this yesterday, so finish it today. Yeah. No, they're literally like under the bra already. They're yeah. like, oh no, we're not going to take our sweet time. We're not even going to buy dinner. We're just going straight for it. Third base, bitches. <laughs> so, so weird to show you how like fucking married and old I am. I was like, under the bra, is that some sort of movie expression I'm unfamiliar with? And it took me a second to be like, oh, that's a sex thing. Oh, wow. There it is. Getting soft, man. Uh, so anyway, it was great. You're going to be trouble. Him I can tell already. In, in action. Uh, it was really, really nice. And uh, I can't wait to share it all with you. It's very germane to our world and the things we talk about on this show. In fact, if we didn't have this job, we would have probably been talking about whoever got this job and been like, hope they don't fuck it up. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they now, can fuck this up so easy. Now people will say that about us. <laughs> the How circle of life. Yes. Bye, <laughs> Um, all right, so there's that. Uh, there's another thing I wanted to talk about. I brought really? All the stuff I brought. There was a bag, too. Where's the bag? Just the bag? Yes. So, you know, we get... Uh, we get. <laughs> he gets. <laughs> I, I get stuff they send, like, you know, the premiums, whatever the fuck. Mm. They, they, they talk about them. You're a tastemaker. Fucking, you, you here. Fucking, like, Influence some shit. And we've bought stuff on the show. Like, for Black Panther, they gave me iced tea. <laughs> I know. Like, it was brisk iced tea. And like a tablet. <laughs> And it had a fucking iPad, and not an iPad, yeah, but like a tablet. Same same fucking tablet. And the idea is like, hey, can you talk about this Black Panther movie? We don't know if anyone's seen it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's always so strange, man. But I'm a fan of the things. So I like number one, I'm happy to accept them. Number two, like I, you know, it, it gives me something to show off here and talk about here and stuff. So a couple premiums I've received recently, and this is what, of course, they want you to do with it: show it off, talk about it, and shit. You, um, you want to know what I get while we open up your fancy yes. shit? Uh, Loot Crate sent me a pair of metal straws. <laughs> They're like, here, this is for your dirty cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why straws? I mean, I mean, like... Did you talk about straws? Somewhere? I've never mentioned straws in my entire life other than like to a waiter like can I have a straw that's all I've ever said about straws I think you've been profiled They're like he's a straw man that motherfucker's a straw <laughs> thank you but like now we live in the world in which straws are now a, like, a, like an endangered species so oh that's right so they're like no it's for the environment we're helping you take your own dirty straws out and reuse them a lot and then get like botulism or whatever uh, and then go home but we're saving the environment right so thanks Luke Crate what fancy ass shit yes. did you get you're not going to get anything from Loot Crate after that, man. They're going to be like, what the fuck? We sent you metal straws, you dick. 
Um, this came from, uh, well, obviously, uh, let's show it off first. It's a backpack. Oops. And of course it has some uh, pins on it. Yeah. Uh, there's a branding on it as well. This is from the good folks of Doritos. Who or what, Mark Bernardin, do you think this, this backpack would be promoting? Uh, I'm gonna say either Doritos. Yes. Or Far From Home. It is a Spider-Man activation. <laughs> this is a backpack. It's got four different pins on it representing, I guess, the f four countries that they're in over the, the course of the four. movie. So it comes with some cool pins on it, number one. So if you're a Spider-Man fan, holy shit. Uh, the Doritos tag tells you there must be tasty goodness inside. <laughs> so... Let's rip this bad boy open and find out like what this activation is. If you remember, we once had uh, Shazam sent me a fucking light up sweater, which Jamie got. And I thought of you as I got in the car today because I have Captain Marvel stuff for you, um, which I just didn't grab and stuff because I was grabbing this shit. But it's still there and it's on the side for you. So um, this, they send you, uh, it comes with this letter. Uh, barely a letter and it says Doritos Incognito Doritos that's the name of the Spider-Man promotion Incognito's Doritos somewhere some publicist is like fucking wetting themselves going like he even said the name of the promotion uh, the it was note, the first round we came up with too he's like he's the ultimate pigeon um, <laughs> content under embargo until June 19th is that today no tomorrow Oh, all right. Well, fuck, fuck it. it. At 10 a.m. <laughs> Eastern time. That's kind of like right now. Sure. Um, <laughs> so keep it incognito. So the idea, of course, is like Spider-Man is over there incognito. Wow. What comes in this incognito bag, you ask? Number one, <laughs> Doritos. Doritos. <laughs> that most American of fucking foods, man. The pride of our great home and native if land. you had like a Dorito gun that you could just fire it into the crowd. I know, right? Boom. <laughs> and before we go for the big thing, let's see, is there anything in the up front? Ooh, what's Weed? in the up front pocket? Weed? A fucking passport. Ooh. And on the back of the passport, there is a Doritos tag, of course, inside. It's branded like you wouldn't believe. Uh, there's a page of information. Doritos Incognito Doritos. You're now in possession of Incognito Doritos. Spider-Man teamed up with Doritos. I wonder if they know his secret identity. Um, He's incognito. Yeah, really. Uh, Spider-Man teamed up with the Doritos R&D. That would be research and development, I imagine. To make a revolutionary new bag that transforms into his suit. While the detail... Is this wearable food? <laughs> Is this like some Lady Gaga shit? Hold on, don't pull it out yet. I'm just, I'm, One at a time. I'm, I'm it's, 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 curious. Don't, don't spoil it, man. Fucking you. Sorry. It's, it's, impatient boys miss dessert. <laughs> uh, while the details are top secret, we've enlisted you to test it out. We recommend wearing it in inconspicuous places like comic conventions, cosplay events, or jury duty. <laughs> Okay, certificate of authenticity. Uh, this certificate verifies the authenticity of the limited edition Spider-Man replica suit created for Doritos and Spider-Man Far From Home promotion. This replica is one of 185 worldwide. I got suit, holy shit, this is some signed and numbered shit. I was about to make fun of it, but this is dope. <laughs> Thank you, I mean Doritos. Uh, I'm still going to make fun of it. Just you don't. You can. Go ahead. Suit number 77 out of 185. Instructions to put on the Spider-Man suit. There's, they're not fucking around. Open bag and gently pull out suit. So this is the yeah, bag. Gently pull it out. Gently. Ooh. <laughs> on the back. Or on the front, it says Doritos. It's shaped roughly about the size of a Doritos bag, but you would, would feel that. What would you say that's made of? Canvas or something like that? Uh, this is made of the shit that they make the bags at Comic-Con out of, right? Yeah, good call. Absolutely. All right, so let's read the instructions. Thank you. No, it's, I've been working that all night. It said... 
is Velcro. Un- open bag and gently pull out suit. So sexual. Oh. So it's a Velcro. Yeah. Hear that Velcro? Someone at Doritos right now is like, he's doing it the way we always wish somebody would do it. Like 70s porn. All right. Ooh. Ooh. Try it on, Mark. Yeah. Holy on. shit. Like, this is actually a quality piece of merchandise, man. I mean, the eyepieces are nice. It got footies. I found the footies. Nate, come on, uh, hold this up on the other side of the bar for everybody so they can see it from head to toe. Wait, 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 wait. It's hold on, it's still stuck it's in the bag. Maybe it's Meanwhile, it says unzip underarm zippers. That's going to be the next step. Step into suit one leg at a time, then place arms in sleeves and pull mask overhead. Do you think I can't, Peter I mean, Parker himself wrote these directions? It feels like it's so, like they want you to wear the It says bag? open bag and gently pull out suit. So maybe you gotta pull it. It was one of 185! No. But there you go, right. now he's, he's free. It's free. It's broken, but it's free. Good luck, Nate. Um, find a friend to flip the bag upwards so that it lays flat on your back. Pull the right underarm zipper down to the left across your back. Pull down left under. We're gonna see if Spider-Man is Jewish. Let's uh, let's see the God. That's actually like it looks like they spent a few bucks, man. It feels better than your normal party city costume. Turn around, uh, show the camera so they're not all yeah, back. Yeah, get, get There's a camera the, that you're just showing them all. Go back. stand against the wall. You know. The yeah, wall. yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Pull up the uh, headpiece. Yeah. Fuck, man. It's not bad. You slip in through the back door. Can you put on the top <laughs> half? No. Is it small? That small? It's twink size, certainly not for husky lads. Instructions to store the Spider-Man suit in the bag. Lay the suit uh, out flat. Zip the underarms closed. Hold the soles of the feet together. Fold the roll. Oh, they tell you how to put it back in the bag. Yeah, then t- in the passport, there are a bunch of stamps to the places they go in the movie, presumably. England, Prague, London, U.S., Italia, uh, Italy. <laughs> so close. Uh, Germany, Venice, uh, and European Union in general. So those are all the places, presumably, they're going in the movie. This is a sweet little cool passport. And this, what looks like a plane ticket, of course, is from Fandango. Use the Fandango promotional code uh, code below for two free movie tickets to Spider-Man Far From Home. So they gave us some free tickets. But... It's also like kind of dope because it looks like a plane ticket and at the top it says Peter Parker seat oh. 1A. So like you get to keep it too. Like you don't have to turn this in. You just you put in that code and you get to hold on to this forever. And then one day you have kids and they're like, why do you still have this? <laughs> Which happens to me all the fucking time. Um, this is pretty dope, man. Maybe we give that away at the in end. In terms of an activation, I mean, the bag's destroyed. Can we give it away? No, it's fucking one of 185. No, we can give the movie movie ticket away. Oh, the movie ticket. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. Yeah. Jeez. I don't even know why I'm keeping the suit. I'll never fucking touch it again, but I'm like, it's mine. It's one of 185. The Jason Mewes in me totally came out where I'm like, mine. (laughs) Um, What else do we have? I did a cool event last week in the city, a gaming event with the good folks at uh, Twitch Prime. And it was called Kev's Day Off, and we played uh, PUBG, me and Jay, and Marty Brodeur, who's a Devils legend, goalie, New Jersey Devils, uh, and uh, Taylor Hall, who's a current legend who just won. Martin the Brodeur? Heart. Martin Brodeur, well done, yeah. I know a hockey thing. You do. <laughs> just um, won. <laughs> this was the, uh, uh, they gave me a controller. Uh, it's a brand that is, what is it called? Somebody who game in here knows the, uh, sc- no, Scuff. It's a scuff controller, and it says Kev's day, Kevin's day off on it. Um, and it's cool. for, I guess, PS4. PS, it's for PlayStation. Um, really fucking sweet, man. The whole event was, like, fun as fuck, man. We got to sit around and play games uh, online with a bunch of people. And, 
you know, Jason plays games all the time. He's always doing playing Fortnite and inviting people to come play with him and stuff. Um, when we, you know, opened the game to like the general public, they gave him the code to the server we were on. So the room fills up and they know that we're playing. Fucking everybody just focuses all of the gun power on killing Jason Mewes as quickly as fucking possible. And to watch him and hear him get so frustrated, he was like, come on, let me play! Because he barely hits the ground. They're like, Pfft. it's like, fuck! It was really it was a fun fucking time, though. Um, this is the trade paperback of my miniseries, Hit Girl. Uh, all four issues are done. I think they've been released at this point, but they've, uh, I've, I got this last week, so that means it must be hitting stores in the next week or two. Uh, they compiled all the issues into it. Really great looking book, uh, drawn by Perneal, who came and visited mm -hmm. us. Uh, she did the DC uh, Superhero Girls line design. So this is in stores. Uh, Mr. Mark Miller's company, good folks at Image, put this out. And it's a fun story that is insanely reminiscent of Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. In fact, it's just the same fucking story. <laughs> <laughs> it literally is. Um, so there's that. Now there's this. Let's bring this out. This, as we all know, Ghostbusters recently celebrated their 35th anniversary. Yeah. Ah! <sighs> um, they, this box uh, got sent to me uh, uh, on the side. It says, danger, high voltage. 1 kV electronic shock hazard remove power before repair or adjustment. There's the logo um, on this side. Uh, it says, uh, Kevin Smith ain't afraid of no ghosts. <laughs> Which, you know, fuck you, I am. Um, <laughs> don't speak for me. But uh, this came from uh, Jason Reitman, sent me an email and said, hey, I need your address. We did a Ghostbusters 35th uh, anniversary thing, convention or yeah, like weekend, on, someplace just on the recently. Sony lot or something. Is that where it was? Yeah. Anybody go to it? Anybody know about it? You were invited to it, but that guy went. You went? How was it? it? What did they do? Get him a mic. Hold on, here comes JC. He'll get you a mic. We had somebody that attended the Ghostbusters thing. Uh, they had a bunch of the different Ecto ones, giant Stay Puffed uh, Marshmallow Man more people in costume than I've ever seen. Like, almost equal ratio of uniforms to civilians. It was great. They had... So what, did they bring like a lot of fans in or something? Yeah, it was thousands of people. People came from all over the country and uh, I had to go. It was just... Was it awesome. free or did people have to buy tickets? Was it I, I, I had a friend Palooza? who was painting, doing a live painting there, so I... Uh, uh, you went got as a me guest. In, so, yeah. Uh, but it was... Um, Ackroyd there? I bet you Ackroyd was there. Ackroyd, um, Ernie Hudson, Will Atherton. I think that was it. But. And, like and, and Ivan and Jason Reitman. Yeah. And did Ivan got up as well? Uh, yeah, he did. And I heard, did they show, did I read like they showed footage? They showed outtakes of the, the first movie. And like first alternate movie. angles yeah. of famous And stuff scenes. that you go, oh, can they cut that? That's... Are you like, serious? The lines, they were, it was, yeah, it was fantastic. Uh, will <laughs> the rest of us see that? Uh, they, I think they put it on the Blu-ray, I want to say. Mine hasn't arrived yet, so I don't know. Um, uh, while we're here, man, let's uh, give it up for our man right here, who had an <laughs> inside dope. That's all I got. We, our man, our man, we should shout out also has we got some inside dope on our man. Our man just gave us inside dope. We got some inside dope on our man. That's Nathan Hamill, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up hey, for Nathan. Hey guys. Next week they're doing an event here. Uh, Nathan has some very cool vinyl figures that he's releasing and he's gonna do his uh, launch party here. What are they called? Drorgs. Uh, right? Drorgs. And um, which is? Half robot, half bird. <laughs> We're going with that. Bird. <laughs> it's, yeah. He, he operates the same way we do. Yeah. Um, they are awesome, man. They're, they're exactly, I, I guess, yes, they're drorgs. You're, you're right. They're <laughs> robots and birds, uh, for lack of a better description. Uh, when is the release? 8 p.m. on Friday, June 28th. But I would recommend arriving early because they're super limited yeah. if you want to get a set. Right on. So, so we open at 6, so you, you know, 
I'm not going to tell you when to get here, but I'd get here before eight. <laughs> and when they go, they go. Uh, oh. These editions. There'll be this one, which is the Starfield edition, and a bluish one that's the carbonite. That's also an element that exists outside the Star Wars universe. So I guess that we're not. <laughs> we're okay with it. Yeah. Like you can say it's a natural. But... Yeah. Um, the SW. This is uh, so. If you're all in the area, man, uh, it was a week from Friday. A week from this Friday, yes. Come on out, get yeah. yourself some jorgs. But uh, before I let him sit down, I'm gonna give my, my man a quick shout out. If, if, if y'all, uh, if let's do it this way. Anybody in this room, and this is not for my own ego, but this is just to, before I go forward in the story. Anyone in this room familiar with a motion picture called Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back? <laughs> The year is 2001, and we're trying to uh, fill a role in the movie. Somebody had agreed to do it and then couldn't do it because they were trapped on something else. And so uh, at one point, the casting uh, director, uh, Christine Sheeks, was like, well, you know, just who would you love? She's going like, you know, if you just, who, who, if you could put anybody in the role, like, give me some names, some real pie in the sky names and shit. And so I, I wasn't like reaching for, uh, you know, modern day uh, fucking celebrities because we had like Ben and Matt in the movie and stuff like that. I went for my childhood heroes and whatnot. So I said, what about this person? And, you know, I was like, I've spoken about this person's work and my work my whole career. Maybe they might be interested. And they said, we'll reach out. Um, they reached out. This person said yes and did the movie. And it's, uh, it, even if you don't like that movie, people like this sequence in that movie. And particularly when we did it, thought it was real fucking great and stuff like that. The only reason that we got the actor to come do that scene in the movie, because when they reached out to the actor, the actor was like, Jay and Silent what now? <laughs> Completely unfamiliar with my body work, which is absolutely fucking fine. Thankfully, um, he had a kid who actually knew about my stuff and pressured his father to do the movie. It was like, you, you have to do this. Even though his dad was like, I don't know what this is and I don't really like doing things like this. Because of Nathan right there, Mark Hamill played Cockknocker in our movie. Man. Thanks to his terrible taste in motion pictures. <laughs> um, all right, so Nathan was there. That's awesome. Thanks for that insight. We didn't even know we were going to get that out of here, man. We got an inside Look report on the Ghostbusters thing. So apparently they had a Ghostbusters thing at Sony, and everybody fucking enjoyed it. Did you get one of these? Did they, so they didn't just give them out to everybody? Let's find out what it is. So inside the box, inside the box, Look at the box. Uh, I'll, I, I know I'm blocking myself, but in order to read here, I'll. I'll John Doe has the upper hand. John Doe has the upper hand. <laughs> um, K Swiss, uh, that's the sneaker company, but also a, a nickname of mine. Um, <laughs> it's true. Ben Affleck used to call me K Swiss. K -Swiss? Like, K Swiss. I'm not doing that scene again. I was like, all right, B F. <laughs> Uh, K-Swiss celebrates the 35th anniversary of Ghostbusters with footwear inspired by the ghosts of the movie. Share with these hashtags to be part of the celebration. Hashtag Ghostbusters, kind of makes sense. And hashtag I ain't afraid of no ghost. Or, or Which they said singular, not plural. Isn't or, it I ain't afraid of no ghosts? Or, I always thought it was plural. Or nog host. Or what is it? Nog host. Nog host, that's true. Yeah, I'm with, going with, with that one. one. Um, available at footlocker.com. Ghostbusters, uh, exclusively at Foot Locker. Okay, so that's what's on the inside. And we just made a publicist very happy. You're going to break um, everything down. Inside the box, there is... Ah, shit. There's a pop of the scary library ghost. Then there is a... What is this? Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. It says 35th Limited and, and is that not a Walkman. High res audio. It, yes. Is that a mini disc. Player? It's a Sony fucking Walkman. Yeah. It's a fucking Walkman. 
And I didn't even do anything to deserve it. <laughs> so um, just catch me up. Does Sony still make a Walkman? Just for this, apparently. What you guys can't see is there's like a thousand glasses right under here that it seems as if he's going to break at any given time with this. Like, ah, it's a fucking... <laughs> wow. God damn it. Hold that. Oh, Peter Piper picked peppers, but we're rock rhymes. Hope you got your fat down. This is our time. Check the number. What number? But he was quick. Jam Master J. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> You just proved you don't need me. <laughs> um, it is a Sony, I guess it's an MP3 player, and it says limited edition uh, Walkman right on the side. And on the back, it keeps, it says everywhere, not for sale. So I guess they made it just for this. And it's got the Ghostbusters insignia for 35 I am years. now like 60% less impressed that it's not a legit fucking Walkman. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. I get it, but. Way to bitch in that first world way, man. I know. For the free shit that is discontinued, I would have rather the most archaic free shit they could have given me. Naturally, there's a t-shirt involved, of course, uh, that says Ghostbusters, and the, the O is replaced with the K-Swiss uh, logo. That's what creates the O. Now, for the grand reveal, the sneakers. Jesus. We'll find out what size they're. Okay, it's obviously made to look a bit like the trap. Um, and it kind of opens like the trap as well. And inside, holy shit. It's a pair of... Uh, what are what would you call this material? Those are like jellies. Like bark size. This they're like jellies or whatever, yeah. But they're very like uh, like it's it's it slimer green, I guess. Mm. And then let's see the other one. Does it match? Yeah, it's the same thing. So you got yourself a couple slimer sneakers, man. I don't know what. Can you find a size? Yeah, right. Wear this with the Spider-Man suit. Nine and a half. That's my size. <laughs> they must have asked. I don't remember them asking or anything. Um, that's pretty dope, man. I would put them on, but it's going to take a long time. Um, I'm used to slip-ons. Yeah, yeah, these got laces. They defeat me. Those... those <laughs> so those look at that, me. man. Like Good job. Fucking, what a bunch of cool stuff and whatnot to celebrate. Reebok. Ghostbusters, but I remember, God bless you, I remember the first time I got something free because of my job. Um, it, Walter Flanagan, it was a Sega Genesis. I forget who gave it, I was like, oh my God, they gave me a Sega Genesis, and with fucking such bitter derision in his voice, man, my friend looked at me and he just goes, the rich get richer. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, that's my opening shit. You saw some stuff. I've seen some shit in the world. Um, what have you seen? Can I, JC, can, I, can we get some water? Oh, there's waters right there. Never mind, fuck me. Go. Uh, let's see. I've seen two movies. I saw the Dark Phoenix picture. Uh, I mean, Sorry. it's a movie, generously speaking. Like, it has a beginning and a middle and maybe an end. I don't know. Why did you go? Were you, like, desperate to be alone in a movie theater? <laughs> You're like, I haven't been this alone in a the movie theater since Yoga Hosers. I, just, I like the space, you know, I like to just feel my environment. Uh, I mean, because here's the thing. Did like, it do, it didn't do well? It did not do well at all. No, it lost a bunch of money. It opened at like 24, 25 million dollars. That's for, not good anymore? Not good anymore. It's not uh, I've never 1994. Oh, fuck. Uh, now you tell me. <laughs> But like the, the Dark Phoenix story is great. Like even from the comics, even if you break it down to its, its fundamental essence, it's Carrie, right? Like it's a girl with powers that she develops after trauma and she goes to see a doctor and the doctor finds a way to get her past the trauma, not by helping her deal with it, but by walling it away. 
you know, by building these, these psychic barriers so that she doesn't ever feel the pain, but along with that pain is her power. And so as she gets older, as... I, I like your breakdown of the Dark Phoenix storyline. That's pretty, pretty like, compact. It, it's elemental, right? And so as she gets older, as she experiences shit in the world, whether she experiences fucking, like, space storms or just regular earthbound trauma, mm -hmm. those walls begin to break down. And she begins to realize not only who she is, really, and what was done to her, but it was done to her by somebody who told her that he loved her. Like, I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this to keep you better. But... The consequence of that is, oh, so Charles Xavier is the bad guy of this movie, right? That would be kind of fucking cool. No, because he can't be. They got to invent aliens who are the bad guys. And like Magneto shows up for a while and like kind of maybe wrestles a helicopter to the ground with Jean Grey, which when you watch it, it's just like dudes doing this a lot and like straining on their face. Like, ah! Ah! And then she's like, man. It's like watching te uh, telepathic people fight in a movie. We're like, yeah. Ooh. and like one bead of sweat drops. Like, oh, he's, he's he's in it now. But so the movie is not that at all. Like the movie is is you know Jean Grey is not in touch with her emotions, and her emotions are what makes her weak. But really, they're what makes her strong. And Magneto is like kind of in Genosha, but not really. Like doing weird shit in the woods with a bunch of other mutants who are off the grid. And then, like, aliens show up and they take over Jessica Chastain's body for reasons that are unclear. And they turn into, like, scrolls, but not really because they shapeshift a lot. And then, I don't, and then they fucking... So wait, who is, who is Jessica Chastain playing? An alien who wants the Phoenix Force for herself. But nobody, no... She, she's not Emma Frost, which is what you'd think looking at that. Uh, well, trailers. I remember when they cast her, I was like, oh, they recast yeah, Emma no, Frost. Cool. Um, but it just, it's just, it's big where it doesn't need to be big, and it's small where it could have been smaller. And like you could have just done this intimate story about this woman coming to grips with her past and the people who have, who have wronged her in her present. But instead, like, there has to be some giant fucking power down where there's explosions and for some reason there's a subway car on fucking Central Park West and that's keeping people from, from crossing the street. The climactic battle of this movie is crossing the street from Central Park to Central Park West. Are you shitting me? Yeah, yeah, no, that's what happens. If like, the bar is that low, I can direct an X-Men movie. You apparently <laughs> totally can. I... I I've taken my characters from behind a counter to another counter next door, man. Like I, that's kind of like that's half the, the battle. Uh, so yeah, it is not good. It is not good. It's it's the kind of not good that feels kind of appropriate for this to like limp its way out of Fox and back into Disney and back into Marvel's hands. Like they could have gone out, fucking swinging like both barrels blazing, but instead it's just this incredibly impotent version of a story that has nothing but power. Yeah, it feels like at the end of the day where it's Wong. like, they, and they knew the end of the universe was coming, so to yeah. speak. Like, long before we did, those cats involved would have known, like, oh shit, Disney's buying us and this will probably be the end. Just, why not go out, like, fucking... Just do whatever you want to do, do. Let's tell the last X-Men story. And what's strange is Simon Kimberg did... The, the draft of The Last Stand, X-Men 3, which Brett Ratner directed, that was the original stab at the Dark Phoenix storyline. So he got a second bite at the apple mm -hmm. by doing it on this, this time which around. Which almost never happens. Yeah, like that's such a, what do they call that? A, not a MacGuffin, like when you get a mulligan? A mulligan, yeah, you just do it again. The only other person I'd ever heard who got that kind of mulligan <laughs> was uh, Michael Mann. Michael Mann made a, an NBC TV movie called L.A. Takedown, yeah. which is shitty and bad, but he loved the script so much, he then became Michael Mann and said, I want to remake this shitty NBC TV movie that I made, and I'm going to call it Heat, and I'm going to cast the most amazing actors in the world. We're going to shoot the exact same fucking script that I wrote that made the shitty movie, and it's going to be a classic because now I have $50 million and De Niro and Pacino. And so there's, like, you can go online and you can see, like, sort of A, B versions of, like, here's the scene in the diner from L.A. Takedown with, like, Stephen Bauer and, like, some other dude you've never seen before. And then here's the same scene with the same lines with Pacino and De Niro. And, like, it's amazing to see what, like, actually great actors can do with what is ultimately kind of pedestrian dialogue because you've seen it just done horribly. Right. Um, that's the only other instance I can think of, like, one person being like, no, I want to do this again.
We didn't get it right the first time. I'm gonna get another shot at this apple. Jay and Silent Bob reboot. I just let that sit there for a little bit. <laughs> just, just marinate. It. Uh, so yeah, it's not great. Uh, That's a clearly. shame. And and you know nobody wins when there's not a great comic book movie out there because then it gives like media pundits a chance to be like, is the comic book movie craze coming to an end? Film at 11. Do they yeah. do that anymore? I don't know. But <laughs> I've seen people write that article over and over again. And it's like, just because fucking one doesn't do well. Yeah. I mean, this, 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 I mean, Spider-Man's about to come out and take everybody's fucking money. Right. The narrative instead was like sequels and prequels and reboots and deboots and all those things. Are we getting tired of, of sort of IP-itis? And, you know, Dark Phoenix was, was sort of exhibit A, and Men in Black International was exhibit B. That came out as well. That came out as well. Did you see that, too? I saw that, too. Do you not have a job or something? <laughs> Listen, Do you constantly keep telling them I'm, I'm I have a, doctor a lot thing. of doctors. <laughs> yeah. I am, I am, Jesus. I am riddled with disease. <laughs> it requires extensive care from a... <laughs> Panoply of healthcare professionals. I realize I just hired a guy who's we're gonna be like Mark, and it's like he went to the movies again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, he says it helps him write things. <laughs> um, wow, man, that's yeah. uh, that's so, wild. So Men in Black uh, also came out, um, and I mean, I have never those two are fucking charming as fuck. I have never seen two people who have so much charisma used to such ill effect. Oh no, really? Yeah. Because he's fucking funny. He's legit he's, funny. He's funny. He's charming. She's smart. She's smart. She's sharp. funny too. They're both funny. Um, and I like F. Gary Gray quite a bit as a filmmaker. He directed? He directed. He's talented. He's super talented. The thing he's not talented at though is comedy. I don't think we've ever really, like, after, since Friday. Didn't he direct Friday? I was going to say, like, Since fucking, Friday, like, everything's been kind of like straight out of Compton, Fast and Furious 8. Not straight like, out of Compton, straight out of. Uh, straight up, yeah, you're right, dude. Straight up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God, I tried to white splain rap to you. <laughs> I'm like, now, now, let me tell you something. She <laughs> right, straight up. The, the niggas with attitude were not out of Compton, sir. It was Connecticut. <laughs> Uh, so yes, he's, he's, he's not been like the funniest dude behind the camera in about 20 years. I know, but Friday like counts. As a Friday big, counts. Funny, but, funny movie. But, uh, but yeah, like there's just, the, they're using these two actors the wrong way. Like Chris Hemsworth in this movie as Agent H, I think, because Hemsworth, I guess. Um, Is he H? He's H. Um, like, he's a dick. And like, not a dick who's like a charming dick, not like... Thor is a charming dick. Like in Ragnarok, like that's the whole point of it. It's like, let's make fun of this handsome, impossibly handsome, impossibly charismatic guy mm -hmm. by making him the butt of every joke. And that's what makes that work. This is like, he's just walking white privilege. It's like, I'm gonna be bad at my job. I'm gonna be hostile work environment. I'm gonna be smarmy and smug and like, like dude, like why would you do that to Hemsworth? And then she's just kind of like having to be both eager and learned at the same time. What's the story? Uh, the story is she, when she was a girl, and this I think is in the trailers, um, her parents, uh, there, there was an alien in her house, like this little cute fucking fluffy alien. Her parents get neuralized, she doesn't. And so she spends the next 20 years trying to find the men in black. Oh. And so she does, like she, she's super fucking smart, she could have gone into any, any segment, any section of the, of the law enforcement and the government that she wanted to, but she wanted to hunt aliens. Um, and she finally finds him. She says, I found you. Like, nobody else, like, you recruit people all the time. Nobody's ever found you that's got to cover something. So Emma Thompson is like, all right, you're, you're going to be a probational agent. There's trouble in the London Bureau. Go and sniff it out. So they send the rookie to London to go and figure out what the problem is because Liam Neeson hates black people. Not in the movie, just general. Um, I mean, did you guys miss... Did, you forget that he just wanted to like randomly kill black dudes one time and like mention that to a reporter like while promoting a film we only had, we only know that because they were like what was it like making this movie liam and he was like let me tell you <laughs> and then told a story that was incredible a friend of mine got raped and so i just wanted to kill every black person i saw for a week i just went down the streets of belfast and tried to kill anyone would do 
That's his fucking quote. That's He's a like, quote. I would just, I was looking to kill somebody. <laughs> and they just had to be black. Uh, so, yeah, so. Now in Men in Black International. Now in Men in Black International. <laughs> Uh, and so he's like the head of the London Bureau, uh, Agent T. They call him High T because it's British. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and Liam Hemsworth is their like Prince Charming, like best agent in the house, except all evidence is like, you're bad at this. Like, you're, you, you put other agents in jeopardy. Like, you're risking, like, it's, you're not a good person at this job. Um, but we're supposed to love him because he's Chris Hemsworth. And he can only do but so much. And the movie, it's just missing the calibration of Tommy Lee Jones was the grizzled veteran and mm-hmm. Will Smith was the dude who like, was astonished by everything. Like, and it was also deadpan. And that, that dynamic is what makes that work. Mm-hmm. It's the here's the world you didn't know existed. Here's the guy experiencing it for the first time and him slowly realizing that his quote unquote streetwise ways can also be of service and also be an asset in fighting alien immigration crime <laughs> uh, but like it just it without that dynamic without the veteran and the newbie right it just kind of sits there like people who all know everything and just have discussions and Kamal Nanjiani plays like a fucking troll who like lives on Tessa Thompson's shoulder and he's the funniest part in the movie not because he's funny but because he understands that like if I speak in this way it'll sound like it's supposed to be funny and it'll kind of feel funny even if it's not funny right like Kamel Nanjani just talking like he's he's good enough at that to make it that thing but right. it just it it just kind of sits there and, and you look at it you're like no it looks good and the action's fine and these people are handsome and beautiful and charming but none of it is being used to any good purpose mm. what so, do you think happens next if I'm them I make a fucking men in black TV show like yeah there you go and I think you put it in LA like I don't understand why there hasn't been a men in black LA you know like if you're going to be talking about immigration and you're going to be talking about aliens like why the fuck wouldn't you do Southern California and, and you get crazy fucking cameos but yeah. you know remember didn't they have like famous people they always like, do like up on the on the big on the board wall it's and, like, shit, yeah. and like Donald Glover like ha ah. and there's a little like <laughs> and there's a little like there's a little JJ in, in international like he's on the big board as JJ Abrams yeah yeah that's cute um, but yeah it's it's fine it's not good it's not the worst thing I've ever seen but it commits a cardinal sin of just being fine like Mediocrity is like okay. Wait, so better than X Men? Better than X Men, and then at least it feels like it's kind of a movie. Somebody but object to that? No, agreed. Oh, agreed. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was very grumbly. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> so defensive. Oh no, I'm on your no, team. No, no, Fuck no, no. You're right. You're right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and, and but the best thing that I saw this week was this tiny show that's on HBO. Uh, that's uh, executive produced by Lorne Michaels and Fred Armisen called Los Espookies. Yeah, Fred show. <laughs> Los Espookies is my fucking jam. It is, it is. Is it all in Spanish? It is all in Spanish except for there's a sequence where Fred Armisen plays the world's best valet parker. <laughs> um, and there's a whole sequence where like you see his mutant power of being able to park cars unlike anybody else in the world. But when he's in like with the other valet guys, the head, the leader of the valets, is a, is a black dude who's speaking English. And so instead of subtitling in, in English and they're speaking Spanish, they're speaking sp- English and they're subtitling the Spanish. So you know, there's Spanish yeah. words in the bottom, which That's is kind of awesome. cool. But my favorite, there's this bit where, because it's four, it's four people, they're all friends. Um, there's a, a goth dude, there's a kind of twink chocolate fortune air. I think is the closest. There's a woman who works in a dentist's office making fake teeth. And then there's uh, a woman who does not seem to feel pain who's the dentist lady's younger sister. And so the, the, they, they, they get hired by a priest to help him fake an exorcism because there's a young priest in the parish who's super hot that seems to be super popular. And so the old priest is like, the only way for me to get back in their good graces is to do something awesome, right? And so we're going to fake an exorcism. And so, and so he hires these guys who like they had thrown some birthday party they had decapitated heads and shit he's like you seem to be good at this uh, can you stage it for me and the, the gay guy on, on their way in he turns to his buddy he's like listen I was dropped off in an orphanage 
when I was young. And the, the priest who's at this parish was the guy who took me in. And he hated me and I hated him and he thought that I was possessed by something but it turns out I was just, you know, colicky and whatever it was. But if that's why the priest doesn't like me, that's why. And he's like blue hair, like earrings, like it's not that I'm super gay, it's that I was left on his doorstep as an orphan. All right. It's so, it's, it's very like Napoleon Dynamite level, like super deadpan, super straight ahead. Mm. But I, I just, I kind of love it. It's so great. Is it multiple episodes? Um, yeah, it's half hour. It's like a s- sort of single cam sitcom. It's on HBO? On HBO. So they're not dumping it all at once. It's no, week by week. Portioned by week. out. Yeah. Um, and Fred's in it a bunch? Uh, not a bunch. I don't, I, don't, I don't get the feeling that he's going to be a main character. They might go to him once or twice, right. you know, an episode, if that. But, uh, but no, you should watch it. It's, oh, it's super fun. I saw him do an interview with um, Seth Meyers, and he was talking about it. Mm. And he was talking about how, you know, uh, his accent. He always thought, like, amongst his white friends, he feels very fluent <laughs> in Spanish. And then when he was working with these kids, they were like, you don't talk right. <laughs> <laughs> like, Your accent is bad. Um, all right, so that sounds like uh, uh, something to look out for. Yeah, totally. And I, uh, I think next week we'll get a, more into Good Omens, which I saw the first episode of, and really liked. Yeah. But I got to dive deeper, and uh, Jessica Jones. That's right, Jessica Jones has dropped. The, the as last well. of the Marvel Netflix. We have to see that uh, great lady off into that good night because this is it for all the Marvel shows, and she's yep. the last one, man. So. Yeah. Because yeah. remember how excited we were when that all began, oh, and like the Daredevil fight. fucking like made our hearts leap. That hallway fight sequence and shit, and then. Luke Cage was better than you imagined it would be, and then Iron Fist, well, it sucked, but still, like... <laughs> it came out. when you realize these fuckers were mortal, and then, uh, and then, you know, they got back on track kind of with other stuff. But it's a shame. It's the end of an era, but it's, you know, om- almost the dawn of the era where they make very expensive TV shows that are basically movies as TV shows. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we got that to look forward to. We do. You know what else we don't have to look forward to? Tell me. More Swamp Thing. Yeah, that fucking went away damn quick, yeah. man. We talked about uh, how they shortened the season. Yeah, they shortened the season. And like last episode, I, I, we talked, like I loved the first episode. Yeah. And then like two days after the first yeah, episode they dropped, the plug. they announced that we're cancel- the, the show's canceled. They're yeah. only doing that one season. Yeah. Um, so obviously not about quality or, or fan interaction because they barely... <laughs> released, yeah, to make that decision. Seems like that might have something to do with the shifting landscape over at Warner Brothers and the new app that they're talking yeah. about. There's a bit of that because they don't know if DC Universe is going to continue going forward, and so they're not entirely sure how much money. The app, the app, app, app the DC not Universe. DC. Yeah, like, come on, man. <laughs> Fuck yeah. It. Um, and also that uh, we talked about how they built some giant stage for it, like they had a sound stage in North Carolina, and they built a swamp. And like, so there are some places were like 15 feet deep, other places were standing deep, but they, all of that stuff was all indoors somewhere. And storing that set was gonna be so expensive that that contributed to the, like, listen, are we gonna really like pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to warehouse this set between seasons? And the answer was, no, I don't think so. Wow. So yeah, like it, it, it's sad because it was a really strong show. Or at least the first episode or two was really strong. I don't know how it ends. Have they released all of them, or are they? It's still week by them week. Out? Yeah. Still um, week I'm week. diving in, man, because I keep passing Warner Brothers. The studio has a giant piece, a poster up for it, and it looks like the cover of an old Swamp Thing, um, Stephen Bissett cover, I think, or John Tolman cover. Um, gorgeous, and and I'm like, wow, they really fucking got the spirit of the show. It looks like. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Warner Brothers, um, for the last three months or so, um, J.J. Abrams and Bad Robot have been uh, looking for a new corporate home. Yeah, they had their deal at Paramount for features. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had a, a TV deal at Warner Brothers, but they, in, in the era of the mega deal, where like Berlanti was getting $300 million from Warner Brothers and, and, and um, Ryan Murphy got like $200 million from Netflix, like that seems to be the, the sort of arms race of let's find these mega producers and lock down their services. Bad Robot was the fucking Magilla Gorilla of them all. And so Apple wanted them, Netflix wanted them, um, and then Warner Brothers, Warner Media um, made their play. And it seems as if Warner, Warner Media is going to win. Like it's some $500 million deal for them to move 
everything to Warner. Have Brothers. they worked with Warner on anything? TV wise, yeah. Um, Westworld is a bad robot show on ah, HBO. That's right. Uh, Castle Rock is a bad robot show that's on the Hulu. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so like they 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 they, uh, they are in good with Warner Brothers in general. I I also hear, according to the Hollywood Reporter, one of the deciding factors of where they would go, especially Warner Brothers, was if they got rid of Kevin Sujihara. Why did they 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 liked him being gone? They wanted him gone. I think the fact that he was like Me Too captain of the world and like negotiating with actresses for roles in his office and on like party yachts with Brett Ratner and like and JJ's wife co-runs that company co-runs Bad Robot and she was like morality wise we will not sign a deal with you unless you get rid of that guy and they got rid of that guy wow man Um, and so so it looks like that's going to be the move the interesting part is suddenly you have JJ Abrams the, 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 the foundry of remaking IP, of overseeing massive universes of characters, and Warner Brothers, who currently has nobody overseeing the DC universe. Wait, wait, what are you, are you, that's just your idea? That is just conjecture, but it would not surprise me one whit if it was like, hey man, you know who's uh, awesome at doing this thing? That guy, you know what we have that needs doing? Those guys, and he'd be fantastic with and all that material. Yeah, man. what a great job he could after Star Wars is done to yeah. go fucking fix or just make more successful the DC universe and films. That'd be pretty magical. And he has experience, right? He wrote a Superman script. He did years ago. Um, ooh, fuck! That made me very excited. <laughs> I can tell. I mean, I was happy for him. I'm like, good for JJ. Half a billion dollars. They'll be able to buy a new whatever. But, uh, <laughs> but now I'm like, ooh, good for me. I might get some good shit out of this, man. <laughs> That's awesome. Fuck, I didn't know that. Wait, is that news? Are we in the news already? Or We're in the news. We segued right into the news. Look at that. You're so smooth. So smooth. <laughs> <laughs> news is happening and we didn't even know it, man. But Mark just, Bernard is taking us through it. Uh, give us more news. What else you got? Uh, all right, give me a second. So confident a minute ago, you're like, news, baby. News. Give me a second. Fuck off. Uh, are, you, are you prepared for Comic-Con? Fuck no. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I was prepared for Comic-Con the day I was born, my friend. Um, yeah, I, I can't wait. I, you know, I'm busy as fuck. We've got the IMD boat that I'll be interviewing people on again. Uh, I have a Hall H panel on Saturday night where I imagine we might be dropping a trailer. I don't know. Um, that's where we're going to drop the trailer. Um, and, uh, and those are the things that I'll be doing uh, down there, plus some, you know, other whatever. Like, there's a Stan Lee event. This will be the first Comic-Con without Stan. So we're going to cite it in some way. Uh, but, yeah, but, so I'm, I'm kind of set. I'm ready. What about you? Uh, getting there. Like, the last week has been a lot of scheduling and, like, signings and panels and... And, and all that stuff. So it's, it's beginning to get into shape, which I, I'm always a fan of. Yeah, yeah. I love Comic-Con. So to just Was it last year that we got ink pots? We did, yeah. So last this year, year, me and Mark won ink pot awards, which they give, they've only given out a certain amount, but it's essentially like your Comic-Con royalty. Yeah, for contributions to the comic book arts. Yes. It's very nice. It's pretty dope. Um, and this year, um, you know, uh, this year I'm an official guest of the Comic Con, it's mm-hmm. its 50th anniversary this year, mm-hmm. uh, so I got invited as a guest. Like I'm there all the time, but they periodically like will invite me and put me in the book and shit like that. And so this is I can't I think maybe the third time I've been a guest at Comic Con, but a nice big year to do it. Yeah, very cool. I'm not a guest this year. You're, it's all right. You could be my guest. Put my service to the test. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I just realized alright try the white stuff it's delicious don't believe me ask the missus it can sing it can dance after all it's in my pants <laughs> I'm the dirty one 
Um, all right, yeah. what else we got? So yeah, uh, Marvel is coming back to San Diego. They're coming back to Hall H. They skipped last year. Yeah. And so this year they're going to show some shit and we don't know what yet. The well, only, we know they're shooting Black Widow. That is the only safe assumption is that we might see some Black Widow footage wow. at Comic-Con. The fact that they're coming is good news, man. I mean, they could bring all the Eternals with them if they wanted to. They could announce their Shang-Chi if they were ready for it. Mm -hmm. um, they've been meeting with a couple of people. Donnie Yen, I think, had a, had a meeting too old for Shang-Chi, unless it's like old Shang-Chi. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, there's some shit they could do if they wanted to do. But it's nice to see them back. And also, they'll have the TV shows to talk about. Kevin Feige in charge of those TV right. shows at Disney Plus as well. So they'll be able to be like, here's an update on on uh, Falcon yeah. and Winter Soldier. Here's an update on, what do they call it? WandaVision. WandaVision and Loki. And Loki as well, which they released somewhere. I saw a photo of him, production still, of him in like mm. 1970s or 80s New York. Mm. Where was it? Concept art. Concept art. Yeah, yeah. So it was him in time, in 1975. Oh. There's a Jaws marquee. Um, so I'm sure they'll be able to talk about that as well. Yeah. But Warner Brothers, meanwhile, announced they're not going. They're not going. Because they're like, Wonder Woman, still, that we're a year away, so they're not ready to show anything. Yeah, they released that poster and that image of her in the golden right. armor, but, uh, which was amazing. But they don't have anything. Like, I thought they might go with Birds of Prey, but apparently they're not doing that. They're yeah. doing it down there, of course. Right. I mean, maybe they'll schedule a separate Birds of Prey thing, but like Warner Brothers will not have their giant dog and pony show in Hall H. And it seems to be like they're, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like they're alternating now. It seems like DC is staying off years that Marvel is dominant mm. and Marvel but didn't go last year. And I'm sure they're not like, we're afraid of DC, but they're just like, we don't have anything to do. There's right. nothing worth going for. Sure Plus, they've also got, was the D23? Is that that? In August. Disney's own con of sorts, where they're like, look, if we don't do it here, we could do it here for our fan base and right. stuff. But yeah, so that's, that's happening. Um, were you a Hunger Games fan? I was, was going to be trying to be clever, but no. And not, not that I wasn't uh, like, I'm like, I hate this shit. But I'm like, oh, all right, it's kind of Battle Royale. Mm. Uh, Suzanne Collins uh, just announced with Harper Collins, no relation, that, uh, that there's a prequel novel coming out. Oh, I'm sure that'll make money. Uh, most likely. It's set like 65 years before the events of the first movie, the first book. So long before Katniss is even born. Long before Katniss is even born so that you don't have to pay Jennifer Lawrence to come back. And Remember the <laughs> shit. Remember what you loved about the Hunger Games? It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> meet the hunger meet Katniss's grandma this sounds a little bit like uh, this sounds like the Krypton version of Hunger Games um, well so yes. I'm but, sure it'll make a buck or two yes. and Lionsgate is already putting it into like pre-production because they're not not making another Hunger Games movie like fuck we we don't have much anymore yeah we're, they're like we're thirsty more, for Hunger Games we can't make any more Twilights and thought we are done with Hunger Games Hunger Games we're making another Hunger Games I don't need that shit anymore. They got John Wick's, don't they? They do. Is that but theirs? It's theirs. But John Wick, even on his best day, is, is no Hunger is Games. No fucking Hunger Games. Yeah. Those movies were gigantic. I mean, yeah, he'll be fine. And they have Chris Rock's remake of Saw. That's true. Yeah. And has he been talking that up lately? No. Nobody's heard anything new. Been Just very like quiet he's about doing it. it. Might be happening. Um, do you know who else was not happy with the Game of Thrones finale? Everyone! Yes! <laughs> but it has to be somebody noteworthy, and that would be Jesus. <laughs> Even Jesus was like, look, I'm a man of peace, but like, what the fuck? I, I didn't climb I put a lot of time into that. this shit. <laughs> this uh, fucking world ain't worth saving. <laughs> Take them all. <laughs> Uh, I thought it was a little heavy-handed that the dragon burned the chair. There, I said it. <laughs> and when I say heavy-handed, look at these fucking hands. Uh, Cersei herself, Lena Headey. What? Yeah. She came out? She came out, and she said, uh, I will say I wanted a better death. Exactly. Uh, Fuck yeah. Oh, my God. Obviously, 
you dream of your death, you could go in any way on that show. So I was kind of gutted. But I just think they couldn't have pleased everyone, no matter what they did. I think there was going to be some big come down from that climb. But when like, kind of the lead actors of your show is like, yeah, I wanted, I thought that was chicken shit too. I know you can't please everybody, but that pleased nobody. No, there wasn't a single person that was like, good, I'm glad she was crushed by rocks and we didn't even get to see it. And then they showed her the next show and she still looked pretty. Like, <laughs> nobody wanted that. Everyone was just like, oh my God, I want to see the dragon eat her, burn her. I want to see her fucking fillet. Anything, everything. Yeah, brand should push her out a window. Fucking something, man. Like, so many people could have like gave her a comeuppance and instead it was the ceiling. Yeah. Uh... So yeah, she's not happy. I don't blame her. That's that. I'm still not happy. I'm not chafed anymore, but. Yeah, I've moved on. There are other things to be upset about, yeah. but. Uh, I'm going to read this only because I'm very happy about the pun that I made Kay. in this. Lobo might get his own showbo. <laughs> See, right? Like, you, you cannot take this cheap Entertainment Weekly punster out of me. That's true. Uh, but Sci-Fi is developing a Lobo spinoff. Now, from for those who aren't paying close attention, Lobo makes his first appearance this season on Krypton? Yes. He didn't appear last season. Correct. And he looks like the lead singer of Slipknot, if I remember correctly. <laughs> um, he is, uh, look, I applaud this. I can't believe that fucking Lobo has not been exploited to the nth degree mm. at this point. At one point, he was DC's Wolverine. Yeah. And he could sell books and shit like that. And he's tailor-made for fucking media, for a TV show, for a movie or something like that. He's got, you know who should have played him? I know he's playing fucking Aquaman, but yeah, Momoa would have been the perfect fucking Lobo. Um, and maybe that's what they could do between like fucking, you know, I'll yeah. do Aquaman, I'll do Lobo, and I'll do Aquaman and Lobo. My man. And then they can meet and fight. <laughs> um, but anyway, I, I, so he hasn't, have they started Krypton season two? They have, and uh, next week we will have a Krypton guest in the house. Oh, do tell, explain. Uh, Seg L himself, Cameron Cuff, uh -huh. will stop by. Oh, well, very yeah. nice gentleman, the star of the show. Sweet. Super sweet, big fan. Um, but he's, he's in town doing press for it. And Where do they shoot that show? Uh, Ireland, I believe. Krypton. <laughs> yes. That's my boy. Nate's got a child's heart. Don't they shoot it on Krypton? <laughs> <laughs> How long does it take the dailies to get here? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody tell them the planet's about to blow. <laughs> um... All right, so Lobo might get his own show. <laughs> See, right? That does work. That was uh, the only reason um, I, I, I that. think that's smart. I mean, whether and I haven't seen their incarnation of Lobo. I've seen what he looks like. I haven't heard right. it or anything. But that's a, a, an idea I fucking support. And it also feels like that character is being groomed for more. Yeah. Like they might finally realize, oh, we got something kind of cool here, man. Let's let's roll them out in various media. Yeah. And Sci-Fi is sort of looking for another comic book show because they just killed Happy. Happy got canceled. Oh, that was, uh, the, that yeah, was Grant Morrison's show. Yeah. How many and seasons did they get? They got two. Mm. They got two. And they, uh, they, they're looking for another space show because they're like Killjoys, I think, is in its final season as well. Okay. So Lobo might be their silver bullet to hit both of those birds. The answer to all their problems. Yes. What a world we live in where there's going to be a Lobo TV show. Yeah. Crazy, wonderful. His own showbo. <laughs> Stop trying to go. make Shobo happen. I'm making it happen. Uh, all right, the last, the last bit of news Kay. is um, they're making a Dune show. We talked about that before, right? Now, wait a second. They're making a Dune movie. Yes. But they're also making a Dune show that will be connected because it's, this, it's what's his name? Denis Villeneuve. Yeah, Villeneuve. Will, is directing the feature, will direct the pilot. So the they show. are connected. So they it'll are connected. be like a spinoff of sorts. And the show is Dune the Sisterhood. It is all about the Bene Gesserits. It's, oh, shit. Yeah, which is super fucking exciting. Because if you know anything about Dune, uh, the Bene Gesserits are fucking badasses. Yeah. And have been plotting the, the, the birth of the... Was that That yes. fucking turned me on right there. <laughs> Especially because she was like, quiz that's Hatterack. Oh, perfect. Just, just a little shimmy. Perfect pronunciation, man. Ah, uh, the sleeper must awaken. Um, My name is a killing 
word. <laughs> I shall not fear. Fear is the mind killer. <laughs> We could do this all day. I know. We were I'm supposed like, to do a commentary track about Dune. And now, now, now maybe we should. Well, it'll be timely if we do it as the new Dune is happening. When is the Dune movie coming? 2020. May 2020. And the series? Uh, as yet undated, but I would have to guess. Where would we watch the series? On the forthcoming Warner Brothers app? Indeed. So that's going to be how they like start hooking people. Yes. They're gonna do that's the their guys. Star Trek. What's the Star Trek show? Star Trek Discovery. Yeah, that's their Star Trek Discovery of sorts. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. I'm in, man. Fuck it. Especially with him. I like him as a storyteller. He's mm. not let me down yet. No. Denis Villeneuve. All, I mean, fuck. What was that movie? The Arrival? Yes. Jesus. What an amazing fucking movie. That holds up. It seems like one of those movies you watch the first time and like, oh! And then you go like, well, I can't ever watch that again. You could fucking watch that every damn day and still find something surprising or new in it. Such great writing, great directing. Um, all right. That's it? That's it? That's it. Give it up for Mark. He had a bunch of news for you. I thought that Okay, before we jump into Q&A, man, uh, real quick, we're going to bring somebody out. Last time we did the show a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, in the back alley, uh, we met this uh, young lady here, Kristen, and Kristen is on a mission. And I told her, oh my God, come fucking tell our audience, because like, it's, you know, we're filming it, so other people hear about it and stuff, because this is a cause I think we could all get behind. Kristen, take it away. What are you working on? Uh, since May 24th, I have been walking from La Brea to Vine and back again on Hollywood Boulevard petitioning to get Carrie Fisher a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Right on. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Some of you have signed it. Thank you. Doing the Lord's work, man. Now the board <laughs> says, where is Carrie Fisher? It says, where is Carrie Fisher? And I have people from CAR screaming, she's dead! And I'm like, I know, sign the petition. They don't, it, it's a, the sign. Ah, Los Angeles. Yes. <laughs> the sign is supposed to get you to come up and ask me about what it's about. And right. I'm always looking down at the blank stars, like where's Carrie Fisher's star? Because I was cosplaying for tips up in Hollywood Square, like a lot of, you know, recent transplants from different states. I, I'm from Virginia and I needed money. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> thank you. And and you're more enthusiastic about it than I was. Is that uh, a thing? Is that a thing? Like out, out of towners come here and, and. Yeah, well, if you have any kind of costume, you know, you go up there and you take pictures with tourists and you get money. And I did that because I had a sexy pr Princess Leia costume. I got hired, like, to play Princess Leia at a bachelor party in April and it was fun. And I was like. <laughs> I have this costume, let me go up here and see if I can make some money. And I was asking people, where's Carrie Fisher's star? And I found out that she didn't have one. The next day I showed up with a sign and a petition and I haven't stopped since. Wait a second, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, the biggest question I think we all have is like, is there money in the bachelor party dress up game? Yeah, because actually. Uh, I have a silent I, Bob I costume that I would love to fucking work the weekend. You can work my bachelorette party when I marry Seth MacFarlane. Um, but I, why does everybody laugh when I say that? Anyway. Uh, yeah, well, I should have asked for more money because what I did was I put together a playlist of Star Wars parody songs and I like, I was super method Carrie Fisher. I was like, oh, they want Carrie Fisher? They're going to get like the most feminist uh, bachelorette, you know, bachelor party MC ever. And I, like I wrote joke intros to the song. I used two Weird Al songs, of course, Yoda and the, the Saga Begins. And there's like a ton of parody Star Wars songs on YouTube and it was fun and I was just like dancing and then seeing the party and at the end I felt like the, it was like really poignant you know the force is is love it's what really helps us evolve and I wanted that to kind of be the point of the performance that I gave them and yeah I should have made more money on that job but at least I got the costume out of it you know and I started this quest and uh, every day I'm out on the street with these buns little kids faces light up when they see me and, you know, I, I put my hands on my hips and I say to little girls, you know, I was born a princess, but I worked really hard to be a general. Uh, how, 
uh, can people help? Do they need to physically sign a petition? Yeah, well, I asked the parents first. I don't let no, no, anybody not under... not fuck the kids. How can these people help? How can people, uh, everyone listening, watching? Money watch would it? be great. Uh, yeah, because I have structured this project where I'm paying myself $20 an hour. I have a public spreadsheet on my blog. You can see everything I'm spending on it. Uh, this is three jobs. This is uh, costume character, petitioning, and um, social media marketing. Because if, if people don't pay me, I'm like, that's fine. Can you share a picture? Hashtag, where's Carrie Fisher? Let's just get the word out that she doesn't have a star. And, you know, highlight the sexist inequity that still exists within Hollywood. And, uh, yeah, it's not paying the bills. I'm going to have to get a day job. But I still, I have to keep going for those little girls who look up to me. They need to know that women can get the same honors as men, but we have to struggle and starve and fight for it. I don't have to starve if you donate some money, though. I mean, and I'm going to hire other people, too. Long term, this uh, is a nonprofit startup where cosplayers petition for women's rights issues. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And I, I hired my first employee tonight, too. I paid a dude 20 bucks to follow me around with the camera so I can make like a YouTube promotional video. So like I have $4 left in my bank account now, but I like used everything I possibly could to like, you know, spread what I'm getting, what I'm making from this so that uh, other creative people have a chance to make a difference in the world. And I think that's something that Carrie Fisher would have supported and would have been, would have wanted to be a part of. I, I hope. I, 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 well, <laughs> Every signature I, yes. gives me a new hope. <laughs> um, well done. I would imagine too, with uh, the late, with the new Star Wars coming, this would be a ripe time to. You know, the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce issue. has this rule that makes them wait five years after somebody's dead before they'll give them a star, which is bullshit for two reasons. First of all. They give them to living people all the time. Second of all, this is Carrie fucking Fisher. This is long overdue. Yeah. So the petition is specifically to get them to break that rule. I want this to be the Carrie Fisher rule to get them to eradicate the five-year rule oh, specifically cool. for her. That's dope, man. Uh, you are doing the Lord's work, man. Everyone give it up for Chris. Or whatever. <laughs> Thank you. So awesome. Um, okay, man, now we come to the Q&A part of the evening. We do. Um, this is the part of the show, ladies and gentlemen, where you good folks uh, get to be involved. And I know we got our normal uh, booty to give out. Was there something else? We do. We have uh, Harry Jake. Potter in the Order of the Phoenix tickets at the Hollywood Bowl uh, uh, June 29th, so a week from Saturday. Two tickets. Two tickets for Hollywood live orchestra. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah, they show the movie with, and then the live orchestra plays to the movie at the Hollywood Bowl. Yes. How do we get these tickets? The, uh, Hollywood Bowl. Yeah, Hollywood Bowl. The Bowl's good our folks neighbor. at the Hollywood Bowl yeah. gave us free tickets. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Well I done. went last year to Star Wars at the Bowl. Yeah. Fucking awesome. Really. So great. Just to be able to, I, I imagine that Harry Potter will do the same thing, but to sit in the Hollywood Bowl audience. And when the theme fucking in the fanfare starts, everybody pop their fucking lightsabers. And the entire, like, so I'm imagining wands up will happen in the oh, bowl for shit, Harry Potter. Oh, shit, man. And that's, it's kind of beautiful. Everyone's going to be having their wands. That sounds like a good time. All right, so wait, that, but we only have two, so we'll give that as a... As a pair. As a... Best right. question. Yeah. Well, how about, well, that's, what a good idea. We've got three questions and three tickets. Uh... Three sets of tickets from our good full of friends at 4DX, Deacon, and the folks at 4DX always give us tickets to give out for the Q&A. Uh, if you've never seen a movie in a 4DX uh, theater, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, the whole world is coming to an end, clearly, if you read the news. Get your ass into a 4DX theater, man, It'll before it all pregnant. fucking ends. Yeah, oh. <laughs> As Tracy Morgan tells us. It is, uh, <laughs> what a wonderful experience, and now as we're in the summer movie season, what a great time to... You know, be sitting in a seat where they spray shit in your face and fucking you smell burnt rubber. It's amazing. 40X theaters. Uh, they're, they're here in Los Angeles at LA Live. Where else do they have them? Chicago, New York. Uh, there's another one in Southern California somewhere as well. Buena Park? Buena Park. Is that right? Yeah. Fucking Buena Park. That's what we shot clerks too. Um, you didn't ask, but I told you. Well, um, <laughs> all right, so there it is. So what we'll do is we have uh, three questions. Uh, each question asker, uh, if they ask a question good enough, 
gets a pair of tickets to 40X, but of the three question askers, the best question of the night gets the Hollywood Bowl tickets. So normally there's not so much judgment involved, but tonight motherfucker's <laughs> gonna be judged really hard and shit. So we'll, and you know what? We'll take it out of our hands. We'll leave it up to the audience. So Ooh. yes, right? Fucking this is gonna, this is like one of those reality game shows and shit. <laughs> Um, what we'll do is we'll say, you know, question one, and everybody applauds. Whichever has the loudest applause, they win the tickets. That's why nobody gets mad at us. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Diplomacy. Um, yeah. All right. JC, do you have the tickets? Uh, f- just find me after the show. It'll find be a will call. Oh, speaking of after the show, find Nate. You see this beautiful pin right here? It says Fat Man Beyond. Um, we have him available, man. So if you love the show... What the fuck? Go buy a pin, god damn it. Um, <laughs> Nate's got a bag of about 50 of them, man. They're 10 bucks a pop. Grab them from Nate and shit. Wear your fat man pride right on your fucking lapel. Um, okay. JC, as the owner of this here establishment, we always trust him to reach into the audience and find the bravest souls. He's found one. What's your name, man? My name's Johnny. Johnny. Johnny? Johnny? Everyone give it up for Johnny, man. <laughs> Do it for Johnny, man. Do it for Johnny. <laughs> Sweep the leg, Johnny. Um, what you got for us, Johnny? Well, first off, thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate everything you do, as I'm thank sure you. everyone in this room does. So thank you for doing what you do. Thank you. Th- thank you. So I'm going to ask a question, and then I'll kind of give an example is what I'm saying. So my question is, if you could bring back one actor or actress who has passed mm. for an upco- upcoming comic book movie adaptation who would you bring back so for my example i would say orson wells like citizen kane style for kingpin Ooh, that would be my example that's a good pull well thank you thank you um okay do i get to go or him absolutely whoever's ready first i'm gonna go first alan rickman dr doom fuck yes Ooh. Could you imagine his ability to emote from behind a fucking still mask? You know what I'm saying? Like, he was so good. That performance would ooze out of whatever fucking metal they put in front of his face. You would feel it. And, oh, what a dream. Fuck, now I'm mad we're never going to see that. Uh, I have two. Ooh. Um, John Cazell as the Vulture. Oh, oh, shit. Holy shit. Wow. Oh, shit. John Cazell for those. Uh, uh, Fredo. Fredo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who only made three movies, I think. Uh, Deer Hunter. Deer and Hunter. and uh, the bank uh, robbery with Dog, Dog, Dog Day, Day Afternoon. Afternoon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And was nominated for Oscars in all of them and then passed away. Um, I could do things. I'm smart. You're my kid brother, Mikey. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Laurence Olivier as Clayface. Oh wow! Shit. Wow! Deep which which Clayface? Uh, the actor, the one that was with the, the, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's fucking good. Yeah, I would have gotten Mysterio, but we we're getting Mysterio. Yeah, yeah. Can I go again for oh, more? Oh, please, please keep going. <laughs> well, I'll say these are pretty quick, so please go as much as I you remember want. reading, and I still have this Starlog, and I reference it quite a bit. <laughs> uh, there was an ish, issue of Starlog magazine that had Return of the Jedi on the cover, and that's why I bought it. But inside, there was an interview with um, Tom Mankiewicz, Mm -hmm. who was essentially the author of many James Bond movies, but Superman, the movie. And so uh, he didn't get the credit. Mario Puzo got the credit and the other two. But he got creative consultant. But like the word is that, and Dick Donner said it himself, Tom Mankiewicz is responsible for like whatever you love about that first Superman movie. The two of them got together. Uh, rescued Superman from like the hands of people who were like, let's let's do this, let's do that, make it really campy and stupid and silly. And these two guys, for whatever reason, like Dick Donner, not even a comic book guy, but was just like, I this is an American icon. Like this is fucking this is the hamburger, this is apple pie, the fucking Cadillac. You can't fuck up Superman. So even though the dude wasn't like, I've been reading Superman my whole life, he was just like, I know enough that like this gigantic fucking script is stupid. We need to tell a righteous story. We need to tell a story. And the way to crack the code is through him and Lois Lane and stuff. And those guys came up with what is the template 
for almost every fucking superhero movie that followed or every superhero TV show. Like we're still all fucking borrowing from Dick Donner's Superman. Yeah. Tom Mankiewicz gave this interview in Starlog where he just talked about this possible Batman movie in the future. Mind you, the cover date of this is 1983, 84 or something like that. Tim Burton's Batman wouldn't happen for another five years. So Tom Mankiewicz discussed a period of time where Warner Brothers, after the success of Superman, was like, maybe we should take a crack at Batman. And the Batman that they were putting together sounded like fucking insane and amazing. Bruce Wayne slash Batman, Bill Murray. What? <laughs> and not as a campy comedy version. Okay. Like, Tom Mankiewicz was selling a very straight version of Batman, a serious version. His Joker was Peter O'Toole. Oh, shit. Wouldn't that be fucked up? And it oh was the God. idea of the sad clown. So everything yeah. was delivered very theatrically, but he was just, he was not cackling and shit. Um, what were the other fucking ideas? I, I remember reading that as a kid and being like, we could have seen a Bill Murray Batman and shit. And just the way he described the Batman is kind of what they wound up doing. And he was not involved in Tim Burton's Batman, but he eventually got to it. So years before even Dark Knight Returns came out in comic book stores, which is kind of the rebirth of Batman and how we get to Tim Burton's Batman, they were talking about, let's do a serious version of Batman, not campy like the TV show. They knew the TV show had the audience and that's where everybody mostly knew Batman from in the mainstream. But they had this vision about taking the character back to his darker fucking roots years before that would eventually happen. So that notion of Peter O'Toole as the Joker always captured my imagination. Like I love Nicholson's job and Heath Ledger did a great job and whatnot. You know, Cesar Romero, the fucking classic Joker, and, and like, and Jared Leto's been great in other movies. But the, uh, <laughs> no, and Jared Leto was an absolutely fine, absolutely fun Joker and stuff as well. Um, that was delicious. <laughs> because you never do that. No, it I makes really me don't. so happy. I really don't. It's my fucking job. I know. I feel so bad already. My Catholic guilt's kicking in and shit. Like, that's Jordan Catalano, man. Like, fucking. <laughs> Um, so in any event, like the idea, all those Jokers are great. The idea of Peter O'Toole playing the Joker, like still to this day, just makes me go like, fucking, why didn't we see that? Like, and that was somebody talking about doing this shit the way we all treat it now seriously, the way the studios treat it now seriously, long before. It was kind of a visionary take on it before the visionary take that Tim Burton had. So I would say that Peter O'Toole Joker, if we can fucking raise him and be like, one more roll. And he's like, I was in heaven, you assholes. <laughs> but we're like, but you get to play the Joker. He's like, oh, this is worth it. You know, and fucking goes out. But we're going to have to content ourselves with, uh, what's his name? Joaquin's Joker, which looks phenomenal. I have one more. Go. Oh. Because oh, I could yeah. kind of do this all day. I think you're going to win the tickets. I'll be honest yeah, with yeah. you. <laughs> I mean, a lot of fucking pressure, you guys. Uh, David Bowie as Morpheus. Oh! oh yeah! yeah. Oh, come on, give it up. That's fucking ridiculous. Come on. Uh, wow. Sandman. Sandman. Not like, you know, red pill, blue pill, Morpheus. That's weird. Now, fuck, that sounds good. Um, what a great question. You definitely won 40X tickets. Give it up for him, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Excellent job. Pleasure, man, pleasure. We'll see. Okay. All right. Fuck, that was. What about what? How about a woman actress? Whitney Houston as Catwoman. What? Yes. You know what? Not fucking bad, man. I forgot. Like, she'd acted like bodyguard yeah. waiting to exhale. Wow, man. And clearly she knows from demons. The preacher's wife as well, yeah. And she knows from demons. She knows from demons. Um. <laughs> All right, wait. Uh, all right, this is one more of a sentimental favorite. If I could bring back any actress and cast her in a role, Carrie Fisher, General Leia Organa. Aww. One more time. One more time. Um, boy, now we're getting sentimental. Um, all right, hey man, what's your name? Hey, my name is Justin. Hey, Justin. Uh, Justin. Justin. I, I started today 
3 a.m. in Seattle, and here I am to see you guys. So. Welcome, man. <laughs> Give it up for my man, Justin or Dustin? Justin, Jay. Jay, Jay, Justin. <laughs> Welcome, I, man. I, I had this question all lined up where it's going to be like, well, if you guys could be on a show together, you know. But <laughs> kind of a play on a question from a couple of weeks ago, but you guys kind of blew that up, so thanks for that. Um, <laughs> but I have a question. Um, we just finished Avengers Endgame, wrapped up 10 years of Marvel movies. Great superhero movies, all of them. Um, most of them. Um, I'm, I'm really interested in the idea that maybe there could be a super villain team-up movie that could actually be a really excellent movie. And, you know, maybe starting with the Joker and building towards something, or maybe a completely different IP. So I, I'd like to hear both of your opinions on if you think there's like a super villain team-up movie that could really kind of have the input, maybe not the impact of the Avengers, but could really carry a couple of years worth of movies along. I mean, hmm. villains are hard because, I mean, other than like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid mm -hmm. and like Ocean's Eleven, it's hard to think of villains who work in concert to do anything because they're all fucking like greedy, antisocial psychopaths. So like <laughs> team of those people always feels a little wonky. Um, I mean, you could probably do the well, Legion like, of Doom and have a good time with it. I mean, you could at least do like Luthor, Lex Luthor and the Joker, like World's Finest, essentially, where Batman and Superman aren't your main characters, Luthor and the Joker are. Right. Um, like, that's a way to do it. Um, what Marvel characters could you, Marvel villains, could you team up? I mean, you could do the Hellfire Club. Yeah. That's more, yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. I mean, I think that, that kind of works, I think, because right. it's less a collection of a bunch of equal stature bad guys and more like here's Emma Frost. A collective of, of truly evil right. pulling the strings in the background kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, Hydra kind of does that. Sinister, no, Sinister yeah. Six, which they teased, you know, they, one yeah. point over at Sony. And they might eventually get back to, I mean, like they had great success with Venom. Um, Into the Spider-Verse did very well. Uh, you know, obviously, we're all excited about Far From Home, so it feels like Sony is on a right track, and maybe they do get around to like, oh, here's our version of the Sinister Six. Well, and there, there were team-ups like uh, Shazam's villains would team up back in the day, and um, you know, so maybe they could go somewhere with the Shazam friend. Well, I mean, Black Adam, obviously. Right. Poison, Poison Ivy and, and Harley, Harley Quinn. Quinn. There you go. Well, they're kind of doing that, right? Well, not Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn, but doing Harley Quinn and Birds of Prey. Who else is in it? What are the other female characters? Huntress. Catwoman. Black Canary. Catwoman. Is Catwoman in it? No. No, no she's right. not in that one. I confused my fishnets. Power Girl's got her show coming. Who? Cassandra Cain. She's also in Birds of Prey? Oh, that's right. Um, I would... Uh, I just watched Monster Squad again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> so far, the best villain team up I've seen is, is Monster Squad. Um, hmm. I don't want to let this go. <laughs> I want to think of more. I'll Good take luck. some suggestions You're from the audience. You're not just going to go with Legion of Doom? <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course. Like, I would l fucking love a Legion of Doom anything. Uh, particularly, yeah, they can carry a fucking movie. Especially if, like, the heroes are in it. You gotta have the heroes, but they're just not the main characters. Right, it's right. basically the adventure from the other side of the table. And let's be honest, like, villains are generally more interesting anyway. I think so. Yeah, like a good Suicide Squad movie. <laughs> Which is coming. That would be Which great. Yeah. Like, just, just give me one of those. But, like, <laughs> the good version. <laughs> the, uh, have you read anything about that? Not really. I. Okay. Other than Idris is in it, but not playing. Does anybody know who the villain is? For Suicide Squad. All right, I do, and I just don't. I can't say it then because oh. I thought everybody knew, and I was about to say, "Oh my God, they're gonna!" And then I was like, "Wait, I might have heard." Feel that. free to break something. I'm. I'm happy. To I might have heard that privately. It. <laughs> I can't. I'm not gonna spill it. But the if if it is what I heard, um, it is fucking phenomenal and it boy is it in the right hands with I'll James find Cohen. out and then I'll come and tell all of you <laughs> <laughs> I forget where I heard it I know it wasn't a dream but I heard that and I was like fucking heck. oh no I did you know I did hear it's legit and I can't talk about 
<laughs> I think well, we all know Dave Desmalchin, who's a friend mm-hmm. of the show, um, and he's in Jay and Silent Bob at Reboot as well. Dave, we know he's been cast in the Suicide Squad movie. Yes. Did they announce who he's playing? Uh, I don't think they did. They did. Okay, so he's playing Polka Dot Man. So I believe Dave told me who the villain was with like, you can't fucking say anything. And I was like, I won't. And he's like, don't accidentally say it at Fat Man Beyond. I was like, I won't. <laughs> um, but he, so yeah, that's why I got it. And it, so he's legit. He's read, like is he's it, close Is to it, it Crazy Quilt? No. <laughs> is it Spoilers. on a PS? <laughs> I'm not, no. That'd be, oh, believe me, if it was, I'd be telling you. Um, but no, it's much, much cooler. It's fantastic. And, and it, 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 the moment I heard this, I was like, fuck. That's genius. Um, the team is kind of different as well. Mm-hmm. Like all of it sounds like a good fucking time. And I liked Suicide Squad. I wasn't one of those people that shit on it. I enjoyed it. But fuck, this sounds amazing. His incarnation. But dude, you just shit on it. When? <laughs> <laughs> With Jared Leto. Yeah. 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 Oh. I shit on it. I'm not one of those people who yeah. shit on it. That was some like, serious shade, Kevin. It was. It was a little bit of shade. And then I kind of pulled it back a little. It was, bit. Just, it was like a wet. He's fart. not the whole movie. You know, yeah. to be fair. It was, it was a wet fart. It wasn't a full-on shit. It was just a drive-by. It was a bit of a shark. Yeah. Um, all right, that was fucking good. We got good shit out of it. Give it up for man, man. He won some tickets. <laughs> Pleasure. JC, another victim. What's your name? Hi, my name is Jessica. Nice Everyone give Michelle. it up for Jessica. Hello. Hello. Um, so the big thing this last couple of years has been um, universes. So my question to you is what universe have you been dying to see, whether it be in TV or movies or video games, like my personal favorite? Uh, what would be an ideal universe to you that you wish that they would just do? Hmm. A moral one? <laughs> 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 no? Too much to hope for? Um, let's see. What would I like to see? Um, what universe haven't they fucking touched? Because Lord knows everybody's grabbing everything up. Um, I'm going to have to give multiple answers because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about my entire life right now. <laughs> and all the things that I've liked across that lifetime. And a lot of things, you know, are still in the Vogue, mainstream in Vogue, like Star Wars and whatnot. But when I was a kid, pre-Star Wars, I had romances with stuff. I was a big fan of Snoopy, so I'd love to see the Peanuts universe, like, fucking done insanely well. But I think they're doing that over at Apple, from what I understand. Apple bought a big stake in the Peanuts, I read, and... I'm, God, I gotta be so fucking careful, because I'm always throwing out information <laughs> that I assume everybody knows, and then I'm like, wait, did like, I just hear that? Apple's making fucking Peanuts? Are you... I think, I think that was in the press. Though. Yeah, yeah, sure it was. Um, so there, <laughs> I think, I hope. Yeah, so Spike. it looks like that'll be coming to life. Um, here's something I really liked, and I, I know they're trying, they've been trying to fucking do it, and I, I had to run at it and stuff, and sooner or later somebody's gonna do it, but the title is a real nut biter, but still, the Six Million Dollar Man. The idea of Steve Austin, astronaut, we can rebuild him. Like, that fucking shit is made for a multiple... That's what they're working on now. It's supposed to be a Marky Mark movie. Yeah. And it's called the Six Billion Dollar Man, because inflation. But, um, <laughs> but like all that shit tracks, right? He's fucking, you know, an astronaut or a test pilot who gets in a fucking wreck and like, he's gonna die. We gotta save him. And now Bionics is even more plausible and shit. Mm-hmm. When, when that show was on when we were kids, this is based on a book called Cyborg. Um, when that show was on when we were kids, that was like the 70s. It was like, could you imagine if a human had a fucking robot heart and shit? And that would happen like 10 years later. So maybe, you know, the, the idea of a cybernetic organism is no longer fucking surprising to anybody and shit. But I think there's poignancy to that story. And I think like it's got a universe, man. It's got Jamie Summers, Oscar Goldman. Uh, and that's it. There's only three. So, uh, <laughs> do you feel that would be more suited in a TV setting or a yeah, theatrical that, setting? Yeah, that to me feels like a TV show, but I know they're trying to make a $6 billion man movie. And again, with Marky Mark, it's kind of plausible. But yeah. I would personally do it as I'm a in. show. You're in for the Marky Mark I'm version? totally in. Because of Marky Mark? Or just, just for Marky Mark. That's alone? Actually, yeah. Has he done, like, oh, Transform? Yeah. A transformer. You guys, I think Semi. I found a transformer. <laughs> Very good. It's, it's fucking Optimus Prime, you guys. So how do you mother for me? 
Have they? They uh, this week in the news, or maybe the last two weeks in the news, I've seen some Keanu Reeves like Marvel stuff. You've been seeing that? Yeah. Rumors yeah. about uh, Keanu Reeves like Eternals. is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. It's for sure the Eternals. All right. I That's, mean, look, I'll see anything they do. But it's confirmed was, by Johnny in the corner. I mean, tells he, us, he is breathtaking. Us. I'm there for anything they do, but that's like, you know, naturally I hear Keanu Reeves. I'm like, oh, my God, they got to make him some character that I know. But like, they're like, no, we're going to make him someone you don't know and probably don't remember. And that's smart because that'll attract people to something mm-hmm. that doesn't have. Like this one, I'm not saying it's a test, but like them doing the Eternals is like, yeah. Yeah, okay. The journals, all right. I trust you. But that one's, that's even deep cuts for me. So I'm there for whatever they do. But like, I guess it makes sense to like put Keanu in that, put what's her name in it? Um, Angelina. Angelina. Yeah, they're going to need to pack that, I think, with some stars so that people are like, what is this? Because it doesn't have the built in, like, the Eternals takes place like a thousand years before. I guess, but neither did Guardians when we got Guardians. And That's why I'll never fucking, you know, I'll never be like, they can't do this. They pull, I remember when they announced Guardians, I was like, that was one of the worst comic books I ever read. And I said, I can't believe they're fucking doing this. They have so many other characters. Why the fuck? And then that's one of my favorite movies ever made. So, you know, in the right hands, anything could be wonderful. Um, but I just don't have any, I'm not, I'm there in the bag for them, but there's no part of the Eternals that touches my childhood where I'm like, oh, I've always wanted to. I was like, oh, that's a book I avoided. You know, so... <laughs> I look forward to the movie, man, in a big, bad way. Um, but yeah, I've seen some Keanu Reeves stuff. I was, I was kind of hoping it was for something more like, what, he's going to play Norman Osborn? But uh, no, it sounds like he's going to play in The Eternals. Speaking of Norman Osborn, man, you think we get a, a Green Goblin in this new Spider-Man universe, or you think they stay away from it because they're I mean, like, we've done it. We had day. it in Spider-Verse. Yeah, a little touch. Yeah, a little touch. Big, giant fucking touch, but... But I mean, in the Tom Holland... Spider-Man movies. Like, so far we've had Vulture. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting Mysterio. In a world where we're heading, or hoping for a Sinister Six, they gotta at least get three of them out there in a movie before making three, you know, bringing three new ones in. I think, I think before we get Goblin again, you get Doc Ock again. Oh, we got Doc Ock. Yeah, well, I mean, Dr. Octavia. Octavia Yeah, and and look, I'm not discounting into the Spider-Verse, but they're not necessarily going, these things are fucking tied together. It's like, yeah, they're all tied together, but I'm just talking mostly about the mm. live action franchise at this point. The, uh, well, who would it be if it wasn't, if you weren't doing Greek Island? He's got like one of the richest fucking rogues gallery, deepest benches in comics. Like it's Batman and yeah. fucking Spider-Man. I mean, there's Craven the Hunter, there's, you could bring the fucking Punisher back for real if you wanted to. You could, I mean, but we've seen it. We've seen it done insanely well and stuff mm-hmm. on TV. And also it's, you know, Spider-Man movies are PG-13, right? Mm-hmm. Do we really want Punisher in the PG-13 movie and shit? <laughs> Where he's like, I'm going to F him up, Peter. You know, and shit like that. <laughs> You can't protect him, Pete. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, what, uh, what other Spider-Man villains? Rhino. Kingpin? Yeah, I'd cross Kingpin over into the movie universe. He was so fucking good. Yeah. That's true. That performance was so fucking layered, textured, amazing. So much work went into it. It is a shame what they only got three seasons out of that. And he was really only in two seasons. He was in one episode in season two, if I remember correctly, or maybe two. But yeah, he didn't get enough time with that character. He certainly had more time with the character than Michael Clark Duncan ever got. But as far as I'm concerned, that performance, you could have fucking done a whole show just about him. It was so on point. It was so like disturbing. I saw him describe it in an interview at one point where he was like, he's a man child. Like he's, he's a, you know, a guy, he's a, a, a kid who's trying to pass as a man. And when shit don't go his way, what do kids do? They just throw tantrums. You just shit. really sympathized with him. You Those did, and at villains. the same time, you were fucking horrified by yeah. him as well. Like it was a really fantastic, maybe one of the best Marvel villains of all time. Like hands down, is that performance. So the Peanuts universe is what you're going with. <laughs> <laughs> and we digress. <laughs> uh, that was a great question, and we got great answers. Give it up for well, you. I man. didn't answer. Oh, shit! Thank you. <laughs> I was so in love with my own responses, I was like, never mind. Um, you're my favorite part of the show. What do you, what do you think? Uh, I'm still partial to that idea we had like three years ago for a World War Seuss. 
Yes. You remember that? That's true. Crossover every Seuss character. Crossover all the Seuss characters. Um, in that world, we should do the serial movie, too. You cross over all the serial pitch men and shit oh. like that. Yes, the Tricks Rabbit fucking fighting Lucky the fucking mm. Lucky Charms up. Yes, and Count Chocolate sucking blood. Uh, but I think, Making monsters like Frankenberry. <laughs> I think I would, I would like to see meat. like a real good for real version of Greek mythology. I think the original universe. I, I think... I think you go all the way back and fucking Zeus and Hercules and Apollo and all of that shit. And it's also, by the way, IP that's not owned. It belongs we, to everybody. We all own it, so yeah. anybody could start their own Greek god. Yeah, but I just called it, so it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to go in the alley and pee on it so you guys can't fucking touch it. Yes. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's what I do. World War Zeus and, uh, and the Pantheon. Greatest American hero? Awesome. Yeah, but I mean, weren't they? Did you were just about to do it last season, right? Like yeah. the, the girl version. Yeah, uh, and Hannah then they, Simone. Yeah, and then the they girls. were like, "Ah, we're not going to do it after all." Um, yeah, that could easily be redone. Um, boy, I like that. Is there anything else? Are there any others? Robotech. Robotech, Robotech. but that doesn't mean anything to me. Um, I mean. I'm going over my childhood. Um, Could you do like a like a Thundercats, Silverhawks, kind of like all of those like filmation like yes '80s cartoon crossovers like mask? I think they're talking about doing mask, aren't they? Yeah. It was connected. Uh, what's his name? G.I. Joe, right? To G.I. Joe, but John Cena, 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 who was in. Bumblebee, mm -hmm. he was meant to be in, and they may still be doing it, yeah. but a he, character that crossed worlds. So he was going to be in Mask, and what? And which was the other one? What? Mask, GI Joe. Joe, and Transformers. Yeah, like why haven't they done a GI Joe Transformers crossover? I mean, it seems got to be imminent, right? Because Transformers I mean, is no, certainly not on the ropes, but like the franchise is now seen its biggest right. days now it's time to team it up with another franchise which has also seen its biggest days and be like holy shit the the yeah <laughs> oh yes transformers so fast and the furious oh my god all those fast and the furious fools jump in their cars they transform and kill them in the cars just blood <laughs> seeping out of them and i see that movie They're like dom is dead like it's how can you tell family. yes um, wow, fucking right. that was fun, man. That was a good, a good question, and you did eventually get two good answers. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up for her, ladies and gentlemen. She wants some tickets. Well done, pleasure. No. Denied. So no worries, no worries. Like no worries. Um, all right, uh, we heard three questions. Uh, we've got one uh, set of Hollywood Bowl tickets to see Harry Potter. Uh, to give away to what was the best question of the night. Uh, I'm not going to inform this vote at all. I'm just going to read off or say one, two, and three, and then you'll all make the decision without me. Um, fuck, how do we do this? Let's go backwards. Number three. Which was universes we wanted to exploit. Yeah. Question number two was villain team-ups. Number two. Okay. Question number one was... Back from the Dead. Back from the Dead. Back from the Dead wins those tickets, man. Give it up for him. Excellent fucking question. God, what a fucking fun show, man. Unfortunately, well done. Thank you. Great stuff. Um, fuck. Yeah. This is the worst part of the show when it's over, man. We got nothing left to talk about, but what's this? Zendaya dyed her hair red. I saw that. So Zendaya is, uh, I guess they're doing press over in England for yeah. Far From Home or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. So she put up, uh, I saw this earlier today, she put up on Twitter, maybe Instagram as well, uh, a photo of herself and her hair is red, like Mary Jane's. Mm. And she wrote like, face it, tiger. Which is the famous line when you open the con face you the tiger, the you hit the jackpot. Really great picture. If you've not seen it, take a look at it. She didn't do that in the movie, though. It's just for, like, the press junket. Yeah. But it looked fucking pretty cool. It was a nice homage and whatnot. Um, that's happening very soon. When does that happen? Spider-Man. 
July 2nd. So where are we right now? What's the June, date? June. So there's only like two weeks left. Fuck, yeah. I can't wait. What happened? Ooh, we're here July 2nd. We have a show. When is, speaking of which, housekeeping, uh, do we have another show on a week from now? The 25th and then July 2nd. So the next two shows, uh, next week this time, then July 2nd, tickets to csmod.com. But July 2nd show is probably when we'll be able to talk about Spider-Man. Presumably we will have seen it by that Maybe. point. Maybe. I haven't might, gotten an early invite of you. Me neither, but I might go that day. Oh, uh, right before our thing? Yeah. Maybe like, like a five o'clock show with like the Arclight? I got to go to the fucking Avengers premiere because of Chris Hemsworth, but I thought it'd be weird to call him up and be like, can you get me Spider-Man tickets too? <laughs> He's like, I'm not a scalper, mate. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know if we'll be seeing it early, but that definitely will we'll be talking about. What if we tried to organize? I mean, I'm going to yell at you and sold. tell you what you tell everybody. Get back In the, the fucking, fucking light. light. Yeah. We already sold, I think there's 30 tickets, but what if we tried to organize like, a, like an, a mini spoilers? Like, hey, we're all gonna go to the arc light to the 3 p.m. show of Far From Home, okay. and then come back here. Fair enough. Yeah, we can totally do that. Do the do the show. <laughs> we. It is not all about you. <laughs> the Stubbs membership. I'm an um, A-list member. And some AMC publicist out there is just like, did they just fucking say Stubbs? <laughs> <laughs> That's us. I, I got a stubby. They said stub. <laughs> um, all right. So wait. So we'll firm up details. But it could be. So wait. That's a what day is Tuesday. that? Tuesday. Tuesday. And is when's it, it come out? That Tuesday. That Tuesday. Why does it come out on a fucking it's Tuesday? July Fourth weekend. So it'll be second, third, fourth. All fifth, right. Sixth, so seven. the yeah. idea we'd probably go to like uh, what time is our show at night as per usual? Yeah. So. <laughs> Show seven eight. So, so maybe we go, go at to three like or two three, three o'clock, or two show. o'clock show. All right, we'll shore up details, but that sounds fucking fun. And anyway, we could just make it open to everybody. We're not paying, by the way. Fuck yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> um, everybody's like, we're getting a free movie. No, you're not. Um, we can all meet there and fucking go. That means even people that aren't coming to the show here, if they just want to fucking could go, go watch a movie with us yeah. and stuff, they could do that. And it will be playing like every half an hour on the half an hour, so we can go whenever we want. You ain't kidding. We could, I mean, how many people we generally do about, it was this, 80? Yeah, 80. Maybe, I mean, if somebody wants to do it here, if, you want to, if somebody wants to do the research, Nate, you, JC, um, find like a fucking, there's gotta be a hundred seater in this town that we can rent out and I'll just pay for it and everybody could fucking come. Okay. We'll do that. Like, hundred seater can't be, that much although maybe on opening day they're like fucking yeah this is gonna be a lot of money but i did that once before i did it was on a monday though i think like i was doing a q a in kentucky and changing lanes had just come out ben, ben affleck's movie and was so not hard was to like, buy out a screen for changing lanes. well i mean i told everybody i was like look you show up and i'll fucking buy tickets and shit and i honestly because i told them i was like it's playing at 10 a.m i'm gonna go see it at 10 a.m tomorrow whoever comes i'll i'll buy tickets and you know, I thought maybe two or three people show up. It was fucking 150 people showed up. And I was like, here's my credit card. And me and my big mouth. So uh, we can do that again, man. We rent like a hundred seater out. And, and uh, if, but we'll find out. We'll know by, by next week's show. We'll, we'll be we able to We can call the details. arc light in Chinese or the walkable. Well, yeah, maybe someplace cheaper than that. But yeah, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Some, there's some premium tickets there, man. I mean, you might as well suggest we do it at a 40X theater, and shit, <laughs> which actually would be the fucking move, man. Yeah, we'll get them to pay for it. <laughs> oh, 40X. Let's find out. Like, ask Deacon. Maybe there's uh, well, a, that's a hike. Yeah, because you got to go downtown to LA Live. Yeah, uh, for I mean, it's a free, free movie, fucking movie. Though. A free movie in a chair that jerks you off. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wants that. There's webs everywhere. <laughs> yeah, shooting webs like crazy. <laughs> All right, we'll work on that and, and uh, shore it up next week with more details. But in the meantime, uh, fuck the future. Let's live in the present. Y'all have a good time tonight. <laughs> uh, I want to thank uh, the folks uh, who gave us the Ghostbusters stuff, the K-Swiss Ghostbusters package. That was fun to open up. Uh, the folks that gave us uh, the Doritos folks with the Spider-Man incognito Doritos uh, promotion. That was fucking fun to open up and shit. Uh, but most of all, I want to thank the guy standing to my left. Without him, we have no fucking show, as you heard. Give it up for Mr. Mark Bernard. Oh, thank you. 
And that is Fat Man on Batman for this, uh, Fat Man Beyond for this week, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Kevin Smith. I am Mark Bernardin. Tune in next time, same fat time, same fat channel, smartcast.com or youtube.com slash Kevin Smith. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.